Number 10. Hunga Munga The Hunga Munga is known as an African tribal weapon. It is also known as Mambale. It is a thrown deadly weapon. It is between a knife and a hatchet. This blade is actually cute and very handy, but that is why it is so deadly. If handled by a professional, this blade can kill. The blade appeared in Season 3, Episode 6, where blacksmiths had to make the finest of the African Hunga Munga blade. Definitely do damage. Your crescent edge tip, hook, and gutted. Number 9. Qatar Qatar is a unique type of dagger. It has its roots from India subcontinent. It was widely used in the 14th century. The weapon is usually H-shaped. It is cute and built for the knuckles. It is one of the most famous daggers. This weapon may look small, but it is very deadly. It has a very pointy tip that can pierce through hard surfaces if wielded well. The blade was also a sign of wealth. The weapon got featured in Season 1, Episode 4. Turning my wrist around. Good balance, though. Thank you. Both of our blades performed really well. It's anybody's game until the... Number 8, the Shamshir. Shamshir is a Persian and Iranian sword. Shamshir is a Persian name that means lion fang. It has a small guard but a long sharp blade that can cut through anything finely. It takes a good blacksmith to forge this blade to perfection. This fine blade had contestants work on a bowie knife in season 4, episode 16 to qualify to forge the deadly saber Shamshir. This sword is curved and looks thin but it is as powerful as its name. Number 7. The Tabar Shispar This blade is an erratic axe mace hybrid. It is otherwise known as a saddle axe. It was very popular in India in the 18th century. It is usually 22 inches long with the guard. Its blade has a crescent shape which is 5 inches slim and sharp. Of course, the blade was tested on the dummies, and it was no surprise that the blade sliced deep. In the fourth season, four blacksmiths worked tirelessly to prove that they had the metal to master metal by forging this mighty blade. You put a really good crease in the shield, and the shaft of the axe looks perfectly straight. But it's going to be fun. I decided to make an axe head out of an eight pound sledgehammer head. I want to be able to jump. Number six, Viking Battle Axe. This large blade is handled with a long shaft. It is one powerful weapon that can slice deep into any flesh to kill. The Vikings were not elites, so at the time they didn't believe in swords. They carried axes. This is a very common battle axe. This axe was strong enough to smite even chainmail. This axe got featured in Season 1, Episode 3 of the show. The blacksmiths had to design a weapon from a steel train spring to qualify to forge the legendary Viking battle axe. If you are excited with this list, you're going to want to know the amazing blade that made it to number 1. Multi-layered steel. Overall, this will be one sturdy axe. And even though I don't have the proper tools to produce a Viking axe, I'm gonna... Number 5. Scottish Claymore This blade appeared in Season 2, Episode 3 of Forged in Fire. Four blacksmiths had to work without electricity to qualify to forge the iconic longsword. It is a double-edged sword that was used by the Scottish warriors and highlands in the 15th century to 17th century. Its name Claymore is from the Gaelic dialect, originally called Clyamore, which means great sword. The whole sword is as long as five feet. Really long, right? No offense to short people, but this sword is just as tall. The blade is four feet long while the handle is one foot. This blade is so powerful that it had to be wielded with both hands. So powerful that it could not be handled carelessly. It was only wielded by the trained warriors. Even the Vikings were intimidated by the Scottish warriors 
when they were with the Claymore. The sword was unique to the Scottish that even when the English regiments formed an alliance with the Scottish regiment, the sword was used as a mark of distinction between the two. Number 4. The Japanese Katana the katana is a curved Japanese sword. The shape allows the warrior to easily remove it for quick use. It is a single-edged blade. It was the first blade to be featured on the show and it is one of our favorite. The weapon has a reputation of being deadly. This is why it is seen in many movies. It has a strenuous yet beautiful design. The weapon has a long comfortable guard that can be held with both hands. The blade was used and wielded from 1392 to 1573. It has a light weight compared to the rest of the blades. Its blade is 24 inches long. This blade is so powerful that the competitors had to forge the blade perfectly for a sum of $10,000. The blade got featured in Season 1, Episode 1. <laughs> Number 3, Glaive Gazam. This piece of powerful beauty got featured in Season 5, Episode 5. The competitors had to forge the legendary K-Bar blade to qualify to forge the Glaive of Gazarm. It seems like the French loved pole weapons because this blade also has a history with France. It reigned in the 13th and 14th centuries. It has a German history, but it was used in France, and it started as a knife or blade that was mounted on a pole, but it soon developed into something fine. The weapon had a socket that made the blade sit well on the handle. The blade had a crescent hook added to the blunt side of the blade. This weapon is so sharp that it can cut through anything. It was tested on a steel armored dummy, but the blade pierced through the metal so easily. It's easy to lacerate all the way through. Your weapon will kill. Thank you. All right, Alex, your turn. All right, Alex, your tip is sharp enough to lacerate all the way through. Number 2. Zweihander This is another mighty sword that was featured on the show. In Season 3, Episode 12, four blacksmiths had to weld some blades from tiny cubes of steel to qualify to forge the Zweihander. This sword is a German sword that was used from 1490s to 1550s century. It is a double-edged sword that is 6 feet long and weighs up to 8 pounds. The sword has a parrying lugs and large guard. It also has a fine wavy design and was wielded by German mercenaries and Landsknechts. In fact, the enlistment of this sword by the Holy Roman Emperor, Maximilian I, helped him rise to power in the 15th century. The sword was also used in Italian wars. However, the sword is so strong that it could cut through pikes easily. It was perfect for pike battles because the guard pushed and held the pikes away, while the wavy design slashed the pikes easily. The replica of the blade was so powerful that it sliced into the test dummy so smoothly. In English. Right, they are often, they will hook this way. These ones just happen to look like spikes, which is good. Number 1. Knightly Poleaxe Knightly Poleaxe, also known as Poleaxe or Poleaxe, is a pole weapon. The blade has three deadly points. The axe, that can either be on the right side or the left side. The hammerhead is always opposite the axe. And the thrusting point, that is on top of the axe and hammerhead, in form of a spike. Each of the points can kill. It was used by armored knights in the 15th century in battles, gladiators and judicial duels. It is funny how such a weapon was used for sports, battles, and judicial duels, because it is very mighty. The weapon can cut through any armor. This mighty weapon was in Season 5, Episode 3. There was a round of three tests to see how mighty the blade is. Another advantage to this weapon is that it can be forged into any size and length. 
So, a little cute poleaxe can do damage too, just not as much as the big ones. The different points allow the warrior or wielder a variety of three effective options. If the guard or pole is metal, it can be used for effective damage too. The blade can have a rondel, a round hilt-like disc. The features on this particular blade is just fine and numerous. That is why the arduous knightly poleaxe is number one on our list. We hope you enjoyed this video. Did your favorite blade make it onto our list of overly powerful blades on Forged in Fire? We want to know what you think about our list. Please drop a like, comment, and hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. Thanks for watching Film Trip.